Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon and welcome to this Southeast Area Planning Committee meeting on Wednesday, the 5th of August, 2020. My name is Councillor Michael Helm, and I am the Vice Chairman of this committee, deputising for Councillor Richard Dewitt, the Chairman. The meeting is held under new regulations which came into effect on the 4th of April in response to the COVID-19 situation. There are just a few housekeeping issues to run through. First of all, please could I ask everyone present at this meeting to ensure your microphone remains muted and your video feed is off when not addressing the committee. This will reduce backdoor noises and avoid any unintentional disturbances. This meeting is being hosted remotely, streamed live and recorded. And by being present in the meeting, you are giving your consent and being recorded. Members and officers, during each item, please use the chat function of the meeting to indicate if you wish to speak. I will then invite you at the appropriate time. Members are reminded that apart from indicating you wish to speak or that you have to leave the meeting, the chat function should not be used for questions for any other purpose. Please do not use the raise hand function as this is not available on all members' devices. When speaking and referring to the agenda papers, please ensure your reference, you reference a page or paragraph number. And last, if members need to leave the meeting at any point, please make it known using the chat function to signify that you need to leave the meeting. Now we'll ask officers to take part in the meeting to introduce themselves, starting with Mr Lee. Mr Lee. Thank you, Chairman. I am Matthew Lee, Lead Specialist Place here at Morden District Council. Michael Johnson. Thank you, Chairman. My name is Michael Johnson. I'm Lead Specialist Development Manager. Thank you. Thank you. Catherine Matthews. Hello, I'm Catherine Matthews. I'm a specialist in development management. Thank you. Thank you. Devon Hernaren, is that correct? Herner, yep, well done. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Devon Herner, a specialist in development management. Thank you. Thank you. Louise Stapleton. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Louise Staplehurst and I'm a specialist in development management. And have we got any other pre officers present? Uh, just there? myself, Chairman. Uh, oh, yes. Bernard Casey yeah. Clark to this afternoon's meeting. Thank you, Chairman. Bernard, can you please now carry out the roll call of members to confirm who's in attendance, please? Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please, Bernard? You're Michael muted. Bowen. Sorry, I was muted. Um, I will call your names in alphabetical order, members. Councillor Bassinger. Good afternoon, Bernard. I'm here. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Beal. I don't think we have Councillor Beal with us. Um, okay. Councillor Boyce. Present. Thank you. Councillor Channer. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm. I'm just trying out these headphones. Yes, I'm present. If you need to see me, I can put my camera on. There you go. I am here. Lovely. Thank you, Councillor Fluker. Present. I don't think I'll be able to use my video because I haven't got any broadband strength. Okay, Councillor Helm. Present. Councillor Hull. Present. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you very much, Councillor Skeens. Yep, I'm here. Thanks. And Councillor Stamp. Present, Berner. Thank you. Thank you, Berner. Apologies for absence. May I have apologies for absence, please, Berner? Yes, we've received apologies for absence from Councillors Bell and Dewick. I'm afraid they can't do daytime meetings. No. Minutes. It is recommended that the minutes of the meeting held on the 11th, 10th of June 2020, found on pages 7 to 22, are approved as a true and accurate record. I so move. If you wish to second that motion, please turn on your video. Unmute your microphone and state your name now. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to reach, uh, uh, raise the matter at all? No? Right. So they're agreed by assent, are they, Chair? Yes, it looks like it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Declarations of interest disclose the existence and nature of any disclosable pecuniary interests or pecuniary interest or non-pecuniary interests related to items for business on the agenda having regard to paragraph 6 to 8, inclusive of the Code of Conduct for members. Members are reminded that they should also disclose any such interests as soon as they become aware, should the needs arise throughout the meeting. If any member has an interest to declare, please use the chat function to indicate now, and I will invite them to speak. Anybody? Yes, Councillor Fluker, Chairman. Councillor Fluker. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, in the interests of openness and transparency, Agenda 5, I know the applicant. Agenda 7, I know the applicant. And Agenda 9, I know both the applicants and the agent. Thank you, Chairman. Anybody else? Uh, Chairman, just so you're aware, Councillor Channer has a hand up. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. I also oh, I did, sorry. Yeah, I did. No, I did the chat as well. So sorry, I'm just playing around with this a bit. Um, just to declare my normal one at the moment, Chairman, non, um, um, sorry, elected member of Essex County Council as well. It's non-pecuniary. And of course, they get consulted on various things under their remit, such as highways, access, education, archaeological, maybe, etc. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody um, else? Also, yes. Yes. On, carry on. Uh, yes. Can I? Um, I know yes. the applicant of number five. Sorry, and that's Councillor Hall, is it? Yes, that's Councillor Hall. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. And, and then Councillor Stamp would like to speak as well, please, Chairman. Yes, yes, please. Yes, Chairman. I'd just like to say, in my capacity, because um, everybody's declaring interest so clearly, as the mayor, I have met various people, and people have made applications on today's agenda. Chairman, can I just say in future, I really do not feel it's necessary, um, but I just wanted to cover myself for today's meeting. Thank you, Chair. Well, that's fine. You've, you've done it once and that should suffice. Thank you very much, Councillor Stamp. Anybody else? I will declare... No, no I Chairman. Sorry? Sorry, I was just saying there's nobody else, Chairman. I... Well, I will just... declare an interest in the last, last item. It is Councillor Sue White, Mrs Patton. Uh, she is a fellow councillor on the uh, Mould District Council. Thank you. Uh, da, 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 da. Land adjacent thread, thread need, Threadlands Ham Farm, Steeple Road, South East. Uh, application 1901-335 stroke outline. Land adjacent thread needles farm, Steeple Road, South East, found on pages 23 to 24. In a moment, I will call on officers to present this item. Members are reminded that if you wish to speak on this item, please make this known using check function within this meeting. I will then come to you in turn. Please keep your points clear and concise. Smith Matthews, to the report, please. Thank you, Chairman. So, um, this is an application for land adjacent Tiedems Farm in um, Southminster. The um, location of the application site is indicated on the um, on the overhead there. Um, it's an application to demolish the existing buildings and the construction of new buildings um, to be divided into eight units, um, business units for Class B1 and or Class B D1 uses. Um, this is an outline application with um, all matters of detail reserved for future determination. This is a location plan showing the application site. Um, it shows where the existing buildings are, right in the corner, um, at the, 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 um, the junction of Steeple Road and Scott Hill. Um, all the other buildings that you can see on that slide are uh, residential properties. It's an aerial view of the site, showing again those existing buildings in the bottom right hand corner, the open storage and, and the other uses made of the um, area to the north. The, um, the aerial view is not up to date because the, the field appears to be on the left and above the site is currently being developed um, for residential purposes. Catherine, we've had a member ask in the chat if you can move your mic, so I think there's a bit of feedback or something. Okay. I couldn't hear anything. I don't know. It, it, it's the noise of your breath, I think, going into the mic. If you might need to move it away a bit. Okay. Is that better? 
Uh, that's a lot quieter. <laughs> I was going to say, if I move it away, it won't be. Some happy compromise. Is that okay? That's fine. Yeah, I don't know how. I must. I don't know. I had this problem before. Um, so we've got the. Um, I have to hold it out of the way, maybe. Um, so we've got existing elevations and floor plans of the building that's on site currently. Um, this is a, an outline application. Um, so all matters are, res are reserved, including layout and access. But this is an indicative block plan which is submitted, which suggests that the buildings could be located on the southern boundary of the site, um, with parking in the middle and then a t um, attenuation pond um, to the north, with a new access along the eastern yeah. boundary of the site opposite Crown Way. Chairman, Councillor Boyce hasn't got a picture. Sorry to inter interrupt you, um, Karen, but no Councillor Boyce has got no picture. Okay. Yeah, I'm just checking what, what with Councillor Boyce, what he's using. He's using an iPad. Okay. I'll just pause for a moment then. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Boyce, we've just checked on the iPad and um, and it's viewing fine. Are you using your an iPad or a laptop at the moment, Councillor Boyce? I think Councillor Boyce. Can you I'm having trouble. Sorry, with uh, with the um, I iPad and the muting and unmuting, and I've just got a black screen. Oh. Um, uh, uh, but the iPad but is it was it was all right to start with, but it it just refuses to mute or unmute. Uh, and as I say, I've got a black screen, so I think it looks like I'm going to have to sit this one out and see if it, it clears up. If you could turn it, maybe just, I mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but turn it off and turn it on again, because the iPad is working perfectly, viewing perfectly on this, so. Well, not not here. I've got, I've got a little photo of you and a little photo of me down the right-hand corner, but that's all. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll go out and try coming back in again. Chairman? Yes. Yeah. And, and Bernard, you may have picked it up. I'm getting messages, as I think we all are, that there's a member in attendance. I'm sorry, I was pushing around with these um, mute headphones. So I heard things, but I didn't pick that up. No, well, I've just, I've just um, responded to Councillor Morris to say no oh. to it. Okay. I've, I've, I'm, I'm back, and I've seen. I've, I've now got the indicative floor plan. Oh, brilliant. Okay, that's where we're at. Okay, I think okay. and I have acknowledged the, the member in attendance, so we can carry on now. Thank you. Right, Ms. Matthews, you can carry on. Okay, thank you. Um, no. Sorry, I'm just... Uh... Okay, so hopefully everyone can see that um, indicative floor plan. Um, yeah. And the um, those are these indicative elevations. Um, so the, the top one is the proposed north elevation, which would be the front of the building, but it would have the building would have its back, if you like, to Scotts Hill, and that's the second elevation there, and then the two side elevations at the bottom. Um, illustrative drawings of what the building might look like. Um, and these are some photos of the site. Um, so those four photos show different um, angles of the existing buildings of the site. Um, we've got a photo there showing the new housing being built in the background and also a photo showing the um, Asherton or the area where the Asherton Brook is located between the building and Scotts Hill. <laughs> okay, so um, the application is being recommended for refusal um, because there are sites available in the district as a whole where land falls outside the highest risk flood zone and where permission could be obtained for employment development. The development would therefore not comply with the flood risk sequential test and is, and is not acceptable from a flood risk perspective. The proposal is for a building with a significantly greater foot, foot floor space um, and is indicated as being two-storey building in the same visual, visually prominent position as that which exists. 
Whilst the layout of the site and the appearance of the building proposed is indicative, a building with the amount of floor space proposed <coughs> excuse me, has the potential to be of a size, height and position, which would be visually incongruous within the street scene to the detriment of the character appearance of the area. And it's recommended that planning permission is refused for these reasons. And just for members' information, um, I did have I did have um, a final slide, um, which is an extract from the government um, website showing the flood risk zones, which clearly shows the um, almost the whole site is um, at, 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 as identified as being at risk of flooding. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Under the Council Public Participation Scheme, we have received one submission from the applicant. In line with public public participation scheme, I have reviewed the submission and will now read it out, allocating two minutes only for reading in accordance with the now read. No, I've got the wrong page. We'll be there in a minute. Oh, bear with me. Sorry, Chairman, I had a blank black screen for part of that your announcement. It, you've now pumped coming up popped up again, but I just had a blank screen sorry that was, still hear that was my voice. fault could you, could you still hear the voice could you still hear what was going on council chairman I've lost it. anyway sorry councillor Helm. perhaps if you yes. could probably just repeat that public participation bit because it, the screen was blank and it was very hard to hear under the Council's Public Participation Scheme, we have received one submission from the applicant in line with Public Participation Scheme. I have reviewed the submission and will now read it out, allocating two minutes only to reading in accordance with the scheme. Uh, submission is from Bradley Faulkner. We are very grateful to be able to explain why we have spent so much time and money on trying to find a solution for our small farmyard and buildings. Unfortunately, it's proving more difficult to store our farm machinery and equipment as we have done for many years. Now that the farmyard is entirely surrounded by new houses and is already causing upset to the residents, they do not wish to hear tractors and equipment running whilst, they, whilst we are attaching implements and getting ready to leave in the morning. We have had several occasions over the last year receive notices of alleged noise complaint which will only increase now that we have been cased in new houses. We also understand fully that it's not ideal view from the bedroom window. We really feel that the proposed development would be an improvement for this trapped little piece of land and will allow employment opportunities and local facilities for the local people who now feel after the last few months that travelling to work is not something they wish to do in the future. Does any other officer want to say anything before I move to the recommendation? The recommendation of planning application 19 stroke 01335 stroke outline land adjacent to Threadneedle Farm, Steep Road South, and to be used for reasons that detail in section 8 of the report. If any member wishes to second that motion, please turn on your video, unmute your mic, and state your name now. Thank you. Um, can we now have some speakers, please? If you want to speak, please indicate. Um, I, I, I'll second it, Chairman. OK, Penny Chairman. I, I okay. thought I must have had this microphone on mute still, sorry. Okay. Would there any members like to speak on this, please? Yes, Councillor Fluker would like to speak. Thank you, Councillor Fluker. Please uh, carry uh, on. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I noticed um, I note that Councillor Chano has seconded the, uh, uh, the the proposal to refuse this application. Chairman, I, I, I asked for this uh, application to come in to a committee, and I, and I certainly sympathise with the with the applicant because this is a very difficult uh, uh, site for all of the the, the reasons that the the officers uh, the officer mentioned in their report. But Chairman, the concern is is that members that uh, have known Southminster for some time will remember. That the Barley Meadows development on on the other side of the road uh, was originally planned to be industrial, and it was something that the the villages fought against for years. 
and eventually we overturned the decision and allowed residential to be there. And the reason behind that, Chairman, was because people didn't want to come into Southminster and see uh, commercial buildings. And I know this is only an outline application, but I think that reason is still there. And Chairman, there's also uh, a massive problem. That rather innocuous looking uh, ditch is actually Ashwood Brook. Uh, and there's actually standing water in it at the moment. And it's causing residents a huge amount of uh, concerning steeple road uh, because of that and what the likely effect of any other development in that area is going to have. So I think, Chairman, the officer's recommendations and the reasons are correct, although I do I do sympathise with the applicant. And, and the other thing, Chairman, I'd also say is, is that if, if the officer could put the proposed site plan back on the uh, up on the screen. Can we do that, please? Yep. Oh, um, it's, it's the proposed one. Uh, it's, it's the one, Miss Matthews, that shows sort of steeple road and the the uh, the, the display. That's an indicative block plan. Yes. Thank yes. you, Mr. Johnson. That's the, the I'm, words, uh, I'm I'm words out of my mouth. Then you did, yeah. <laughs> now we just need the my uh, my my computer's not um, playing ball. Hang on. Sorry. Hang on. There we go. Thank you very much. So um, I know this. What it was there. Oh, I have turned it off. There we are. We're there now. Yeah. I've not got it. I've got a black. No, screen sorry. There. I've got a black screen. I yeah, can't so, see anything, Chairman. So have I. So have I now. I've either. Michael Dr. Johnson, Dr. did you, Ms. Johnson, did you share your screen and show it? If you want to do that again, if that was the case. Yeah, I was uh, trying to come to the rescue. Uh, yeah, I think you might need to I do think, that again. I think it, it ask, got cut out. Yeah, if we can ask Mr. Johnson to come to the rescue. Please. We'll let you know when we're rescued. Ah, are you rescued? Thank you, we, we are. We are dutifully rescued. Right, okay, so um, members, Steeple Road, you'll remember that there is a, a, a large development now to the uh, the west and north of this, uh, which is I think called Blackwater Reach, which is a development of around about 120 houses. But as part of that development coming forward, Steeple Road is going to be blocked off, which means anybody sort of in, ingressing and accessing this site um, is going to either have to come down Steeple Road, which is very, very narrow between the property called the cottage and this application site, or turn left and go up Crown Way, which would mean all the traffic would have to go through the village or negotiate this very tight junction. So, Chairman, I know that highways um, don't have, uh, uh, you know, they haven't commented on this as such, but they need to be made aware, Chairman, should this application come forward in the future, that Steeple Road is due to be blocked off and that there will be no access to the north. Um, so, Chairman, I think Councillor Stamp and, uh, I beg your pardon, Councillor Channer and yourself have, have uh, made a proposal based on the officer's recommendation. I'd ask it be put. Thank you. Berna, can you take a vote, please, on the recommendation, which is duly seconded by Councillor Channer? Yes, Chairman. Um, so, voting for the officer's recommendation of refusal, I will call your name in alphabetical order. Councillor Bassinger? Agree. Which side of Councillor Beale? Councillor Boyce? Agreed. Anna? Agree the recommendation to refuse. Councillor Fluker? Yes, Chairman. With a heavy heart, agree the recommendation to refuse. Councillor Helm? Abstain. Councillor Hall. Agreed. Councillor Skeens. Agreed. Camp. Against. Okay, Chairman, that's um, six four, one against, one abstention. That's carried. Okay.
Thank you very much. We move on to item six. Uh, former Petty Crows Boatyard, the Quay Key, Burnham on Crouch, planning application 20, treble 097, stroke four. Uh, please note a member's update in relation to that application has also been circulated, circulated prior to the meeting. Have you all received that? In a moment, yes. I will call. Yes. That's it. yes. In a in a moment, I will call on officers to present this item. Members are reminded that if you wish to speak on this item, please make this known using the chat function within the meeting. I will then come in you in turn. Please keep your points clear and concise. Ms. Henneran, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, hopefully you can all see my screen. So this yes. is a full application seeking planning permission to demolish the existing buildings within the site and to erect a, a building that would consist of 75 elderly person apartments. And there'll also be vehicular and pedestrian access, car parking, communal facilities and amenity areas. So here we have the location plan. Um, so this is the sea wall along the um, south of the site, Belvedere Road and the Corinthian Yacht Club, just to provide you with some focal points. Um, so before I go into the plan details, I just wanted to touch on some points about the principle of development. The, the application has been applied for as a C2 residential institution and has therefore been assessed on that basis. Um, but section 5.2 of the officer report provides an in-depth assessment as to whether the development would be a C2 use. Based on the assessment in the report, it um, considered that there are a number of factors that lead officers to consider that development is a C3 a dwelling house or a sui generis use as opposed to the C2 use. So the factors that I'm referring to are um, things such as the units would be fully self-contained, the, um, the uh, apartments would require one primary resident to have a care need but that would be set at a minimum of two hours per week and there's no assessment as to what would happen if the individual care requirements fell below those two hours. Um, on that note, so surviving partners would have a right to stay in the accommodation, which would ultimately remove the care requirement. Um, some of the units would be available on the open market and some for rent, and guidance suggests that C2 units are not available on the open market. And many of the facilities provided within the site, which I'll show you um, as part of the presentation, fall outside of the definition of personal care. Uh, also in relation to the principle of development, the site's outside the settlement boundary and it's not considered that there's anything under the exceptions within policy S8 that would allow this type of development because it's not considered that um, given the level of facilities at the site that it would be similar to a community hospital um, allowed under policy I2. The proposal would result in the loss of an employment site which is protected under policy E1 of the local plan and is a primary river related use protected under policy RI3 of the neighbourhood plan. There has been some marketing submitted in relation to the loss of employment, but it's considered outdated as it's dated um, six years ago. There, um, in relation to policy H3, which is the one that you can see on your screen, it um, has been demonstrated that there's an, sorry, it's not considered that there's been um, identified as a need for the type of development and that the demand identified in the SHMA for um, C2 uses have been exceeded for other permissions in the district. Therefore, there's concern that development could result in the inward migration of older people due to an over provision, especially in um, Burnham Town. Government guidance wants um, older people housing to provide a mixture of type and provision of tenure to support people in their own homes before they move to a C2 use, which isn't considered to be the case here. And given that there's a lack of consideration of permission at land, uh, land northwest of Malden Road, or you may know it better as Tinker's Hole, um, means that there's possibly an over provision with Burnham, within Burnham for this type of um, development, so C2 uses. Okay, then, so that brings me on to the plans. This is the block plan. Um, see the roofs of the buildings here, car parking, this would be um, amenity space and amenity space to the north. Here we have the existing elevations and floor plans and then you can see the existing 
uh, street scene and the, the river view across the bottom. These are the proposed ground uh, first floor plan. Appreciate it's really hard to see on that ground floor plan, but there's no living accommodation proposed at ground floor. Uh, this is where the communal and operational facilities would be. There's um, along this part of the site here, there's um, a cafe, bar and restaurant, which would also be open to the public. Um, refuse within this area, of the, uh, bins within this part of the site and areas for mobility scooters. Then first floor would have um, the residential accommodation. Second and third floors, again, um, which would all be accommodation. The smaller fourth floor, or smaller fourth floor, and um, roof plan. These are the proposed elevations. Uh, so the footprint of the building is approximately 830 square metres greater than the existing built form on the site, and would also be 10.7 metres greater in height. Um, this increase in built form is considered to result in an over, over, overly large development, uh, which wouldn't be in keeping with the existing landscape or the existing built form within the settlement to the west. Also to the east is the Denji marshland. Um, the site itself is considered to play an important role between the transition of the urban form of Burnham Town itself to the, the countryside beyond and considered a building five storeys in height would disrupt this transition. Uh, so here we have some street scenes. I think this further highlights the dominance of the building within its setting. Some illustrative drawings. And um, you can see the Corinthian Yacht Club in both of the um, images. Uh, as I'm sure you're aware, it's a grade two listed building, um, but it's not considered that the proposal would demonstrably impact on the heritage asset or the nearby conservation area. Um, but that's but there's still the concerns in relation to the impacts on the character and appearance of the area. And some more illustrative drawing. So this shows that the site lies within flood zone three. The flood risk assessment concludes that there are no other reason, reasonably available sites. But given that as officers, we believe there's an undemonstrated need for the development, it's not considered that a sequential test has been passed. And in relation to exception tests, the flood management and evacuation plans do provide sufficient measures to ensure that development will be safe for its lifetime. But the harm resulting from the development, such as a lack of affordable housing contribution and the impact on the character and appearance of the area, means that there are not uh, that there are limited community benefits, and so it's not considered paragraph 160 of the MPPF is complied with. So here we have some photos of the site. You can see the access road on um, that joins Belvedere Road doesn't include a footpath. Um, the local highway authority have raised concerns into, uh, in relation to the fact that there's going to be more pedestrian use of that area um, and the fact that the access serves a caravan site and boat yard as well as the application site that there'll be conflicts with um, in the highway um, which will cause safety issues for pedestrians. As the applicant doesn't have control over the, this area, um, it's not possible to control this fire condition. And just some more photos of the site um, and some up from the seawall. So uh, to summarise all of that, the development is recommended for refusal um, for the following reasons. The site is located outside the development boundary, country to policy S8. It, considered to be a contrived form of development that results in material harm to the character and appearance of the area and would result in a unnecessary visual intrusion. The loss of employment has not been satisfactorily um, justified. The development is considered to fall within a C3 or sui generis use class opposed to a C2. Um, and so for that reason, the development doesn't make adequate provision for affordable housing. It's not considered that it's been fully demonstrated that there's a need for the development, particularly in Burnham, due to the impacts of other planning permissions. The details in the ecological appraisal are considered insufficient to ensure that the development would not adversely impact on the existing ecological assets and habitats within the site. 
Um, it is noted that there are benefits to this scheme, such as the provision of specialist accommodation, but given that the need for this type of development has not been sufficiently justified, it's not considered that the benefits would be sufficient to outweigh the objections. Um, members are also reminded that there was a members update, which includes further letters of representation and amendment to a typographical error within the report. That's it from me. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Ms. Hernan. Um, we've received two public participation submissions, which I'll read now. Um, first one is from an objector, Diane Bailey. Former Pettigrew's Boatyard, the Key, Burnham on Crouch, CMO 880, Planning Application 20, 0097 stroke FOL. 75 specialists assisted elderly persons living units to be read to members at the 5th of August committee meeting. To whom it may concern, we write to voice the extreme concern of local Burnham residents regarding the planning application. The adopted Burnham on Crouch neighbourhood development plan is clear and specific regarding new residential developments and this lies within zone three floodplain, contravenes policy NHD1 and does not reflect either materials, form or scale of local building policy NHD9. The application site lies outside the development boundary for the town and ample provision has already been made for local residents for elderly and care accommodation with a recent permission of Burnham Waters and then in brackets carbuncle development. Emergency vehicles will impact on already stretched roads and navigate through the centre of Burnham. Residents frequently require frequent diagnosis tests and hospitals need to are over an hour away at Broomfield. For those requiring ambulance this is far from ideal. Vehicle access is a major concern. All traffic serving this new isolated site must pass through a really, really congested town centre. Bel Belvalier Road in particular has long been a danger point and is a narrow blind 90 degree bend where near accidents are happening every day. This is highlighted where a current minor gas leak in the road is causing chaos. Residents of both residential blocks on the Belvedere Road, Pettico Keys and the Crow's Nest have experienced serious concerns over road traffic where the road is narrow and so close to their apartments, which face directly onto the road. Likewise, the Corinthian, Royal Corinthian Yacht Club, where younger members are constantly crossing the road adjacent to their dinghy park many times each day. Buses turn at the end of Belvedere Road, causing tailbacks in both directions. Burnham Town Council, in consultation, have strongly objected to the proposal, citing, amongst other points, MDC's spatula vision development strategy states that it is appropriate to limit the level of growth for Burnham on Crouch to meet its own needs. We are already accommodating the major within the Burnham Waters development. Housing for specialist needs must be spread across the district. The Mould Development Plan specifically attempts to retain commercial use and employment wherever possible. And whilst boats, boats buildings has ceased at this site, it could be developed as a single or multiple small office units, which would be much better accommodated on this site. The change of use proposed is inappropriate, despite claims of the applicant, the vehicular traffic serving the site of 30 daily movements is frankly absurd. With elderly residents moving to and from the hospital, nursing care, deliveries, and with online shopping increasing, the real figure might be 10% that far more than the existing commercial use. It is widely understood that the Burnham infrastructure is already stretched to its absolute limit. Access roads, schools, health care, and sewage treatment the adjacent treatment plant is frequently overloaded, resulting in foul smells through the town with an easterly wind. The view from the river for visiting yachtsmen and river users returns to the, the to the Burnham is iconic. The crane at Rice and Coles boatyard and the eastern wall of Coral Cup are a welcome and familiar sight. The 75 proposed apartments over five stories will spoil this forever. Proposed oversized and scaled building so close to the river. If allowed to proceed, it would be a travesty. 
We urge most strongly that members support the officer's recommendation and fuse the scheme. Thank you. All right, we've got to find the next one now. Right, submission two from applicant Mr. Michael Carpenter. Dear members, I address here in the limited time available just one of the key points made in the planning officer report concerning meeting the district wide need for old people's accommodation. In paragraph 5113, the officer contends that taking into account the outline planning mission at Tinker's Hole for 103 market bungalows and a 70 bed care home, the 55 assisted living apartments, which includes 50 affordable housing units and two further care homes planning permissions close to Tinker's Hole at Burnham, at Malden Road, Burnham, and within the North Haybridge Garden suburbs. The demand for extra care units identified within the Schmar has already been exceeded through these three permissions highlighted above. This is not, this is, this is in fact not the case. Firstly, our proposal is not a care home which provides an entirely different form of care and medical support. Conditions and S106 agreement clauses can be imposed to ensure that difference between the forms of C2 use are maintained in perpetually. We should therefore be concerned only with the proposed number of open market assisted living or extra care units proposed but not yet with detailed consent at Tinker's Hole. The final calculation at Tinker's Hole will depend upon the precise design and restrictions placed on the proposed market bungalow 103 and assisted living market part 5. The Schmar projects market requirement to 2018 for sheltered and extra care units amongst to 258 at best. Tinker's Hole would Produce an open market, old people's independent home, 108, so leaving a residential requirement of 150. In any event, the demand referred to in the Schmar was a demand projected only to 2018, based on data available in 2014. It is an undeniable truth recognised in the Schmar that the population of Molden District, and indeed nationally, is ageing with increasing demand for care alternative forms of accommodation. The proposed development of the would not be completed until 2022, so would be contributing towards meeting an increased need up to and beyond 2022. Four years later than the 2018 projection in the Schmar, and eight years are later than the data collection point. But also worth reminding ourselves that the Schmar assessment recognises how planning would need to be adapted to the changing demands and the growth in new forms of accommodation. Paragraph 13, 10, 4 of the Schmar reads, this, sec this sector, extra care se sector, and other, an older person's housing market is relatively new and the growth forecast in population projects over the next decade to 2021, with those aged 75 plus years, may well increase the need for this type of accommodation. The demand may also increase as understanding of this sector of supporting housing increased. Uh, would any officers like to say anything before putting the recommendation? Right, the recommendation set out in the report is as follows. The planning application 20 treble 097 stroke FUL, former Petticoes Boatyard, the key Burnham on Crouch, be refused for the reasons as detailed in section 8 of the report. If any, any member wishes to second that motion, please turn on your video, unmute your microphone and state your name now. Uh, I'll second Anyone? it, Nick Skeens. Nick Skeens, okay. Indeed, seconded. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll now invite members to make any comments on the report. Yes, we've got Councillor Skeens and Councillor Fluker. Councillor Skeens, please. Uh, yes, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, concerns, of course, uh, and agreement with the officers on concerns about how long this would be a, uh, uh, a care home, if, if it's possible to go in there for, uh, rather ill and needing treatment and then it becomes your home. Uh, so it does sound, it does have that feeling of being 
uh, more of a housing development really in, or sort of a flat accommodation uh, development also of course all the points about it being outside the uh, uh, area for strategic development but most important can, can i ask uh, in my mind anyway among the many very good reasons could i ask uh, one of the officers to put up the pictures yeah. of the first illustrative drawings please yeah, that's uh, really the first of the two Kevin, can you do that, please? Yep, sorry, just trying to to the right. Are we there? Yes, exactly. Now, this is uh, this illustrates the probably the one of the major local concerns. Uh, you look to the uh, historic and uh, uh, awarded uh, multi uh, uh, awarded architecture of the Royal Corinthian to the left in the top picture, to the right the new development which is dominant. You look in the uh, uh, picture below showing Rice and Cole's uh, boatyard followed by this massive development followed by the diminutive um, uh, uh, Corinthian. Now, of course, I realise this is uh, partly a trick of perspe uh, perspective, but the point is this. Some years ago, uh, Morton District Council, uh, in their wisdom uh, or otherwise, decided to uh, agree the development of Burnham Shores to the uh, west of the town. As you approach uh, along the seawall, uh, and indeed, uh, this is all visible from uh, as you come down the high to the station road too, as you approach from the west, you see Burnham Shores and it is massive. It dominates the town. Now, the same is being proposed again, that we have a dominant uh, uh, and similarly similar looking facility, uh, which will dwarf uh, the town itself as you approach uh, the town from the east along the seawall. Uh, I just think that's not acceptable. Uh, I just think there's no way it can be uh, that size. Uh, and indeed should be considerably smaller, even if it was to be approved in any form. And that that is one of the many reasons why I think this is, this uh, proposal cannot be supported. Thank you. Hey, Councillor Fluker, please. Chairman, I just wanted to raise a, a couple of points, but one thing I wanted to ask Mr Lee is what sort of impact is this likely to have on our five-year land supply, bearing in mind this confusion over C2? Through you, Chairman. Um, as the applicant has submitted an application, it informs that it's C2, and if the council was to agree that, then it wouldn't impact on our five year land supply in a positive way, if that makes sense, because it's an unallocated site. So, normally, if it was for dwellings, it would be classed as a windfall, but as C2, it doesn't benefit that in any way. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, thank, thank you, Chair. If I, could, um, if I could just come back with some of my comments. I mean, Looking at, I mean, members will remember. I mean, I, I, I can remember when the Fairclough, Fairclough Homes development was built. I can remember the old PMP Newell pe, um, Pedicos as well, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure Councillor Skeens will as well as a six-year-old, as he always reminds us. But, um, but if you look at that development, if you can see what Pettico Keys is, is the white building. I beg your pardon. It's, it's the, the building with the, the red roof, and there's like a, a white uh gable can you just point at that devon up a bit no no up a bit that's it left a bit no 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 left a bit stop there's the white gable <laughs> well, well that piece of land from the the cursor through to what looks like this proposed dead development um did have planning permission on to extend petticoat's keys and the whole idea of petticoat's keys was when that was approved was it was low it sat down below the Corinthian, it sat below the sea wall, and, and, and visually at the time that was quite acceptable. But Fairclough Homes, I think, disappeared into something else, and that the second part of that development never came forward. Um, Chairman, I, I, I accept there is a conflict with C2, I accept that this is outside the settlement boundary, and, and I think it's a long time since we've had such a, a robust objections from uh, highways. Um, Chairman, I know D1 is very subjective, but I, I agree totally with what Councillor Skeens is saying with regards to what that looks like. I mean, so many water fronts, it, fun, so many water fronts in Essex have been devastated. I mean, Wivenhoe is a classic example, uh, and I think that this really does not fit in. But Chairman, the other thing that concerns me enormously is this is for 75 apartments. Now, worst case scenario, Chairman, that could be 150 people living on this site. 
the the 106 contribution based on this application to the National Health Service to the local GP surgery is £17,664, Chairman, and that equates to £117.50 per occupant if two people live in each of these flats. I know that this is a an NHS algorithm, but this is wholly inappropriate. Um, I was speaking to the the, the, uh, the surgery the other day, Chairman, and they really don't have any capacity. So I, I don't think that is appropriate, that level of funding. But overall, Chairman, I think that uh, this this application uh, is proposed that it's refused. And I think in its current form, and I think that's what maybe Councillor Skeens is alluding to, in its current form, um, it should be refused. Uh, but there may be in the future, Chairman, something else that's more appropriate on that site. But this isn't it. Thank you. Thank you, right, Councillor Bernard. Was, did Councillor Boyce want to speak or did his screen go? Uh, no, he saw, it's sorted now, but Councillor Stamp would like to speak, Chairman. Councillor Stamp, uh, Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Members. Um, I actually have uh, a little bit of sympathy for this applicant. I actually noticed um, that obviously it is in breach of S8 outside the development boundary, but we all know Carbuncle at the top, which was referred to as Tinker, Tinker's Hull, was exactly the same. Um, they also paid NHS contributions, which is what Councillor Fluke has just raised. That is a formula not set by the council. We can't do anything about that. I also noticed that the um, highways actually did put a report in. I was quite surprised because normally on smaller applications, they don't even bother. Um, I actually am very disappointed in the fact that this final presentation and this drawing is being put forward because this um, developer has visited the town council offices on numerous occasions with different aspects. And we always said at our council, we didn't want such a high building on the front and they did a proposal or one of their um, proposals was to move it so it wasn't so high we actually did say to the developer please don't have it so high councillor Skeens was absolutely right we hated uh, the um, previous it's like a bookend you have this you got it this end and the other end um, which is the old CFA site to me it's like a bookend you're closing in the uh, key of Burnham but I do have sympathy to be quite honest with you, I could think of nothing better than in my retirement, which I am eligible to go onto this site if it was building, not proud to say that, to actually look over our beautiful river. But I also share the concerns of our residents. Um, I also, Chairman, if you'll allow me, really wanted this application to go to full council. Um, I think it's, a, it's, it's to do with the whole of the district um, being able to, um, you know, have the fit the criteria for elder people's housing, whether it be C2 or C3. Uh, and I did really, really want it to go, but Council Fluker and the planning officers um, said that it couldn't do because it didn't fit the criteria. But I know you've put a motion, but I'd like to put a motion forward that we actually do defer this to gather more information because there is some information from statutory consultees who haven't replied and the officer presentation was brilliant. She actually highlighted everything that was, you know, lacking, which is the ecology report. Let's not forget, nobody's actually mentioned that Essex County Council, who didn't support the carbon call, is supporting this one. So, you know, I hope members did read this huge report because it was excellently put together. And Devon has actually come back with some separate queries that I had. But I would like to propose, I know I won't get it seconded, that it is deferred to go back to the statutory consultees or like Councillor Fluker turned around and said to try and mitigate and put some different changes in that may be acceptable. I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it isn't. And also for it to go to full council, district planning. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. We have, have we got a seconder for that proposal? Um, well, Councillor Fluker would like to come back. For okay, the Councillor Fluker. I will accept that being you were mentioned. Um, Chairman, I don't want to come back on that proposal, but so I don't know yeah. if you put your question. I wanted to come back on something else, Chairman. Thank you. Right. Do you want to come back or not? Well, OK, I'll come back. But I thought, first of all, you were going to wait for a, a seconder to Councillor Stamps. But I mean, Chairman, 
So, Chairman, I, I, I really just, you know, for clarity, that, you know, the, these two, uh, Burnham Waters and this development are completely, they are completely different. And the Burnham Waters development, I think, brings forward, you know, a medical centre and all sorts of things. So it is quite different, their contribution. But I, I, I did notice, Chairman, in this report that the Town Council objects to, to this and it's contrary to the Bur Burnham plan we've heard. But, Chairman, I think the message here is rather than deferring this, I mean, I'm sure... I'm sure and this is the beauty of these meetings. I'm sure that there'll be lots of people here, lots of people listening in the background uh, to what's being said. And and there's absolutely no reason, Chairman, why they can't go back, come back with a second go. Um, okay. I, think, I think the members have made a, you know, some very valid points, particularly about height and size and scale. Yeah. And who knows, they... Uh, the, <laughs> you know, I can't help laughing at what someone's just put on chat. Um, but who knows... Chairman, they might come back with something completely different that we like. And who knows, Chairman, they might come back with a very exclusive development looking over the river, which, you know, looks more like Pedicro Keys. But I'll, I'll, I'll park it there, Chairman, and I'll ask you, you the first, first we'll question. Move, we'll Chair move on. Tom? Chairman, Chairman, Chairman. Can, I, can I please come back on that? Because Burnham Town Council, yes, did, but I'm an independent person and I look at yeah. the facts, so I'm allowed to say right. whatever view I have. Thank you. Yeah, you have you have said that. That's perfectly satisfactory. You, you haven't got you haven't got a second. So we'll move to the main recommendation that refusal, uh, seconded by Councillor Skies, I believe. Bernard, can you take the vote, please? Yes. So we're voting for the officer's recommendation. Councillor Bassinger. Agreed. Councillor Councillor Boyce. Um, um, agreed. Um, Councillor Chano dropped out for, for a while in that discussion. I just wanted to check. Um, um, Chairman, I lost contact uh, for part of the time you were speaking when you were delivering quite a long message. So I've okay. indicated I'm not going to be voting. I don't want it shown as abstention. I don't want it shown as agree or against. I want it shown that I'm due to losing contact. I feel I can't vote. Thank you very much, Councillor Chair. We'll move thank, on, thank please. You. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Fluke. Yeah, um, I think, Councillor Chair, you just do what I did the other day and declare under Rule 5.7 of the virtual meetings procedures. Um, Chairman, as far as the recommendation, uh, I agree the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Helm? Agreed. Councillor Hull? Agreed. Councillor Skeens? Agreed. Councillor Chan? I'm going to abstain. Thank you, members. That's uh, six for uh, none against, one abstention. Thank you very much for that, Bernard. I'll now move on to item seven. Planning application 200404 slash FUL, Dingy Hundred Sports Centre, Burnham Pouch, found on pages 99 to 108. In a moment, I'll ask officers to present this item. Members, a reminder that if you wish to chat and speak on this item, please make it be known using the chat function within the meeting. I will then ask you to come forward. Please make the points clear and concise. Thank you very much. Ms. Faithful, Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> this application seeks planning permission for the installation of four eight metre high lighting poles, which will be used to illuminate the sports field for rugby yeah. training sessions between five and nine on Mondays to Thursdays. It's noted that the poles are currently in place. Uh, this is the location plan um, showing the um, whole playing field here in relation to the sports centre site. Um, and then this is the area to the north where the lights will be located. Um, the block plan just showing um, a more close up view of where the four lighting poles will be located. Um, the lighting will shine towards the playing fields to the south um, and not shine towards any of the neighbouring properties to the north. Um, the elevations of the lighting. An example of the proposed lighting heads to be used. Some photographs showing some views within the site. Um, these are the views um, south towards the playing fields. 
um, northeast. You can see the sports centre here and then the playing field here. Um, and then this is the view to the north where the lights would be located. You can just see some of the neighbouring properties to the rear. Um, these photographs show um, some of the existing lighting that's already uh, on the site. And then this is one of the poles that's already been put in place. Uh, apologies, sorry, apologies, yeah. Chairman. Could we just check and see if we can get Councillor Boyce's screen back? Just we could just pause okay. for a moment, please. We'll hold for a minute, no problem. Yes, at all. that's fine. Um, he's saying he's going to have to leave the meeting. Okay, so, thank you very much. Okay, so I'll just say noted and we'll carry on with the presentation. Thank you. Carry on, please. Right, right, okay. And then, yes, these photos just show the sports centre here and then some of the neighbouring properties to the north here. Um, so, overall, subject to um, conditions regarding the positioning, timing, use, and luminescence of the lighting, the proposal can be found acceptable as it complies with the LDP and is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. We have received one public participation submission from the applicant, which I'll now read. The applicant, Mr. Neil Hornet. This is a statement on behalf of Burnham on Crouch Rugby Club committee members. Thank you for taking the time to consider our planning application for additional flood lighting at the Millfield site. Our club has been in existence for over 50 years and provides a significant outlet for sporting activities in Burnham and the surrounding villages. We have in excess of 200 children ranging from ages 3 to 17 who participate in weekly sporting activities as well as active senior members, uh, senior men's team, ladies team and the vets team. As the club numbers have grown, so has the demand for training facilities to improve the standard and coaching of the sites. This has led to considerable pressure on the single training pitch and whilst maintenance work has been done to improve the drainage, the constant use inevitably renders part of the pitch unusable through constant use. Last season, we lost around six weeks of training due to the waterlogged and unfavorable conditions. By agreeing to the planning application, this will allow the club to use more of the land, spreading use across a grassy area, and will hopefully result in training sessions being able to take place without the need to cancel. With so much active sport having been cancelled due to the pandemic, it is important that as restrictions slowly get lifted, we're able to provide an active outlet for everyone to participate in the sport and improve both their physical and mental well-being. Thank you for your time. Yours sincerely, Neil Hornet, Chairman, Burnham Sports Club, Chairman, Burnham Rugby Club. Um, officers, do you want to say anything more before we move on? No. Recommendation of planning application 20 fuel Denji 100, Sports Centre, Burnham on Crouch. Be approved such conditions are detailed in section eight of the report. If any member wishes to second that motion, seconded. Your... Councillor Stamp seconded. Well, I haven't finished yet, Councillor Stamp. Stop oh, interrupting. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unmute your mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick up the mark. Pick Councillor Stamp. Stamp. What? Do you wish to speak? Uh, seconded. Sorry, I was pick pick up the mark, Councillor. Okay. Radio. Okay. Does anyone want to speak? Wish to yes, speak? we've got Councillor Skeens and Councillor Stamp. Right, Councillor Skeens first and then Councillor Stamp. Yes, obviously any concern with lighting, uh, especially in the winter months, uh, which is where it's likely to be most useful, uh, is there is a concern about light pollution. As a keen uh, amateur astronomer uh, living on a houseboat south of this site, uh, it is going to affect my, um, uh, well, occasionally when the nights are clear, it w it, that certainly will have an impact and anybody living south of that site, and that is really, as far as I can see, only the houseboats will uh, be affected to some uh, uh, point. But this is uh, encouraging exercise uh, and rugby in particular, uh, is st strikes me as an uh, extremely worthy cause. Uh, and uh, I cannot find it in my heart to object to this uh, uh, for any reason. Uh, I think it's a really good thing and it has my support. Councillor Skeens, do you wish to um, declare an interest? Being you mentioned astronomy and the light would affect you. Um, well, that's interesting. I suppose 
I could, except that I'm uh, I'm not actually voting uh, against it. So uh, I mean, uh, yes, I suppose I have an interest. It's not pecuniary. Thank you um, very much. That's all but, I wish uh, to hear. I'm supporting it. So, Councillor <laughs> Stamp. Um, yes, I think it's fantastic. I think we should be investing in our sports facilities down in the town um, for people who actually go down to the rugby club on a Sunday morning when they've got it's the time of year for the rugby season. The atmosphere along the seawall and all the uh, Riverside Park, it's absolutely fantastic. And I think it should be, we should commend them for putting so much effort and investment, not just in money, but also in time to our community. And I wholeheartedly support it. They work hundreds of hours tirelessly for the community and the and the Denji. It's not just Burnham, it's the Denji as well. Thank you, Chairman. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Anybody else? Councillor Hall would like to speak, Chairman. Councillor Hall, please. Yes, I agree with Councillor Stamp. It's a very good idea, and especially as um, the virus is about, we've got to keep fitter. It's ideal. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor, sorry. Councillor Fluker, sorry, I didn't pick that up, Councillor Fluker. I thought it was a message to Can to Councillor Boyce. Councillor Fluker, please. No, the, the, um, the, the message was about artificial intelligence, but at 1.47, I think I, I did actually ask to speak after the ward members, so we got there. Um, okay. Yeah, I was just going to, um, I was just going to uh, you know, basically repeat what Councillor uh, Stamp said, because I know that Neil Murray is here listening to this meeting and probably others, and they've done a brilliant job over the last... 25 years with, with the, the rugby football club. So well done to them if they're listening. Um, Chairman, just one thing for me, and Matt Lee, I, I beg your Mr Lee will probably be able to answer this. I don't have any problems with this plan application, but members will know that we've had a lot of problems with flood lighting at uh, Malden Tennis Club and the, uh, the River Blackwater, vessels using the River Blackwater. So I just want to be sure, I know this is some way inshore from the river, but I just wanted to make sure, Mr Lee, that um, we can, if there is a problem with boats using the, the river at night time and the light pollution, that we can make sure these lights are kept low. Thank you. Anybody else? I'd I'll like stay. to ask one question, please. Um, the, the picture of the two lights, they look to both be LED lights and one has a sensor on it. Is that to come on when it's dark or when someone approaches? Does anyone know? My understanding is that they're only turned on when they're when they're being used by training, but maybe I okay. can say that. Bryce, thank you very much. We'll move to the oh, Louise, did you want to say something? No, she's gone. Right, um, we'll move to Chairman, the Chairman, sorry to, to interrupt you. I just wanted to make sure oh Louise is back. She maybe she's gonna ask ask my question that I put to Mr. Lee. You know, we just want to make sure that we can control this the light pollution with regards to the boats that are used in the river, in particular the ships, because yeah. it is important. I, I presume they'll do everything they possibly can, but we just want to make sure we can control this, Chairman. Councillor Fluker, would you like to declare an interest because you have a boat that might affect your boat? Um Chairman, I actually mentioned a ship. Okay. Mine is not a ship. Okay. All right, carry on. Seriously, can we, can we have an answer about these lights and whether or not we've got enough in these uh, in these conditions to control them just in case? There's Mr. Lee. Ahoy, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Um, um, as Councillor Fluker knows, once we've imposed or granted permission with the conditions, we wouldn't be able to retrospectively deal with any issues that arise unless there was some sort of control through the condition. That allowed that none of the conditions suggested suggest any way of reviewing that but i don't think that's an issue because i think the conditions are very well covered at ensuring that the light is directed at the pitches and should ensure that there isn't a wider spread um so i don't think there should be an issue now thank you chairman thank you, thank you. is everyone finished no can i come back please chair yeah. just just that i think because you know the rugby club are very conscientious and if there was an issue that actually transpired or came up a later date, I'm sure that they would discuss it with Malden District Council and come to a perfectly amicable resolution. So if something has been overlooked in total innocence, I'm sure that the committee will meet with you to make sure it's OK for the for Burnham. Thanks, Chairman. OK, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Hull, did you want to say something? I've got a hand yeah. up here. No? No, she has, still has her hand up, but Councillor Skeens... I Councillor Skeens, carry on. 
Yeah, just uh, to respond to Councillor Fluker's comments, I think it highly unlikely that uh, ships coming up the river on the far southern bank would be affected by uh, flood lighting on, uh, on the Riverside Park. Uh, there's already a very bright light that is on pretty much permanently uh, to the um, west of Riverside Park up on the car park there by the marina. Uh, these are, as I understand it, and maybe uh, 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 an officer can confirm that these lights only come on when training sessions are in play. And if you're on uh, navigating a ship down the uh, uh, up the channel towards Bamberger's or the Baltic, Baltic Wharf, you're going to be concentrating on what's ahead of you. And to your right, there are all the lights of the town. And I can't really see how this would interfere. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Council. All I can say is it did in Malden quite severely, and there's more okay. lights in Malden. Okay. Than Who's the recommendation, please. Agreed. Recommendation is to approve. Agreed. Seconded by Councillor Stamp. Uh, Councillor Stamp. Bernard, can you take the vote, please? Yes, members, I will call you in alphabetical order um, for the officer's recommendation to approve. Councillor Bassinger? Approve. Councillor Channer? Approve. Councillor Fluker? Approve. Um. Approve. Councillor Hull? Approved. Thank you. Councillor Skeens? Approved. Councillor Stamp? Four. That's unanimous. Well, that's seven for the re officer's recommendation, Chairman. None against, no abstentions. Thank you, Marat Berner. Item eight has been withdrawn. We move to item nine, land north west of River Lee, Nipsels Chase, Mayland, application 20005474 slash FUL. Uh, found on pages 121 to 128. Chairman, I'll, de Chairman yes. I'll declare non-pecuniary. I know the applicant as well, obviously, for right. a likewise reason. Anybody else? Yes, Chairman, we all know the applicant. I think we all know the applicant. Yeah. Yeah. Shall, we, shall, we take, shall we take it? Everybody knows, Councillor. Well, yes. Okay. Right. Please note a member's update in relation to this application has also been circulated prior to the meeting. In a moment, I will call an officer to present this item. Members, a reminder that if you wish to speak on this item, please make this known by using the chat function within this meeting. I will then come you in, ter in turn. Please keep your points clear and concise and to the point. Thank you very much. Ms Herman. Can you put your sound on, please? Apologies, I was talking to myself. <laughs> That's all right. I'll uh, so this, you this once. <laughs> thank you. This application is a variation of condition application and seeks to amend the plan for a permission that allowed the erection of an apple storage barn. So the changes relate to alterations to the windows and doors, and also um, the plans show a brick damp course opposed to the building being fully finished in timber. The matter relating to the brick is addressed in the members update. So here we have the location plan. This site is located to the east of Nipsel's Chase. The block plan that shows the siting of the barn, which has already been approved. These are the previously approved elevations and floor plan. The proposed elevations, so you can see some additional windows um, and openings. The revised floor plan and some uh, photos of the site and some more photos. So the alterations do result in the development appearing more residential in nature than when it was previously approved and it's not believed that it's reflective of its agricultural use but it's noted that the previously approved design was also not reflective of the function of the building and was also of a residential appearance as well. So on balance, given that the alterations don't alter the overall character of the building in comparison to what was previously approved, um, officers don't have any objection. The development is also considered acceptable in all other respects, and so it's recommended for approval subjects to the conditions in the report. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. 
Uh, the recommendation for this application is to approve. Uh, could I, if any member wishes to second that motion, please turn on your video, unmute your microphone, and state your name now. Anybody? I'll second it. Anne Thank you. Hull. Anne Hull, Councillor Hull. Right, okay then. Uh, anyone want to speak on this application? Yes, Councillor Stamp. Councillor Stamp. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't have a massive problem with it at all, but I just wondered if anybody can answer the question why. Why do we need the windows in an Apple store? Is it to make them ripen quicker, Chairman? Do you know? I didn't have time to Google that point. Does anybody know why it, it needs to be changed? Well, I can't tell you because I'm not an Apple expert. Maybe some of the planning officers can tell you. Thank you. I bet a member will be. Yes, maybe. That's what I'm hoping. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so the application hasn't actually been supported by any information as to uh, why the additional windows would be needed. But given that the principle of development was already established through the previous permission um, and that that bit was not for sort of revisiting as part of this application, it's not um, it's not been assessed in, in that way, if that makes sense. It does, and you know, thank you for that because I did read the report and I did understand that. I just wondered if, for a reason, why they suddenly want to change the windows when the application looked perfectly fine. As I said, I don't have a problem with it. It's more of a, you know, why do you want to put windows in an Apple store? But anyway, thank you, Chairman. No answer. Okay. Anyone else? No, Chairman. We'll move to the recommendation, seconded by Councillor Hull. Bernard, would you like to take the vote, please? Thank you, Chairman, for the officer's recommendation of approval. Uh, Councillor Bassinger? Abstain. Councillor Channer? Approve. Councillor Stuka? Approve. Councillor Hall? Approve. Councillor Hall? Approve. Councillor Deans? Abstain. Councillor Stamp. Um, I um, am for it. You, that's five for the officer's recommendation, none against, and two abstentions. That's carried. Thank you very much, Bernard. Any other items of business that the chairman declares are urgent? Um, just so that a couple of members couldn't attend the meeting today because they work. And that's all there is to it. Uh, thank you, members, for your contribution this afternoon. I now draw the close the meeting at. 1417. As the meeting is now closed, member advised not to enter in any further discussion on this forum and please leave the meeting think promptly. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you.